Hey, good morning, Grace Baptist Church. Thankful to be with you uh, this morning. I'm in South Carolina and just thankful for the opportunity to um, just open up God's Word with you. And this morning we're in Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Last time I was with you, we were in Psalm 74. And really, the Psalm 74 finishes up by telling us that it's good to be near to God. Right? Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 73. But as for me, it is good to be near to God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds, right? The psalmist was struggling with life. He saw this um, disparity um, between the haves and the have-nots, and he was in the have-nots, and he was feeling sorry for himself. And the only remedy for his condition was that he needed to understand that being near to God, the fact that God was always near him, uh, was a beautiful truth, and that was all that he needed. Well, this morning we're going to look at a psalm that tells us that it's good to be near God, uh, that being near God always results in goodness for us uh, because of God's presence. And so Psalm 84 is the psalm we're going to draw from. Now it's written by, if you read the, the, subscript, the, the superscription, it says, For the director of music, according to the getith, or the getith, which is a, a stringed instrument, of the sons of Korah, a psalm, all right, so the son of Korah, one of the, the workers in the temple, wrote this psalm. And the sons of Korah go all the way back uh, to Levi, right? those priests who were to serve in the temple. And the sons of Korah really became the gatekeepers. They were, uh, when it was a tabernacle, a tent, they, they guarded the tent, they guarded the gates into the tent. And then when it became a fixed structure in Jerusalem, the different gates, uh, they were the gatekeepers there in Jerusalem. And so... There was always the presence of the sons of Korah, the Levites. Uh, they were there in the temple. They were near uh, God's special presence in the temple. Now, we understand uh, the character of God, that he is infinite. He cannot be contained. Uh, he cannot be contained within a, a physical structure. And Solomon understood that when he built this beautiful temple for the living God. He says, uh, as he prays, as he dedicates the temple, he says this, But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you, how much less this temple I have built. So, so Solomon understood that this temple couldn't contain God, that, that all of God was not in this temple. But he did understand that God's special pre pre presence, uh, his Shekinah glory, manifestation of God, would be in that temple because God promised to be there. So this morning as we look at Psalm 84, we understand that drawing near to God always results in blessing. Let me say that again. Drawing near to God always results in blessing. So I'm going to read the psalm one section at a time, make a point, and then draw some conclusions. So Psalm 84, verses 1 and 2. And the point here is that we should draw near to God because He alone is the source of blessing. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. So there we see that the, the son of Korah, the psalmist, is longing to be in the courts of the Lord. He understands there's a special manifestation of God's presence there in that court. And he understood that God alone is the source of blessing. Now as we go through this psalm, I want you to see the different points where the psalmist makes it clear that being near to God is where he sought blessing. So the psalmist is yearning for the courts of God. This Levite, uh, the son of Korah, was looking forward to that seven-day period when he would get to serve in the temple of the living God. And he says this in verse 3 and 4. He says, Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, right? So he references uh, two birds, a sparrow and a swallow. And he says, you know what? I, I'm i living in a tent now. I long for that time where I, will be, uh, where I will be in the temple courts. And the sparrows and the swallows, they get to go there all the time, right? And he mentions sparrows, right? And sparrows were, were widely considered uh, the cheapest, least expensive birds that a person can own, right? Jesus makes reference to them in Luke chapter 12. He says, you know, aren't two, sp aren't, aren't, uh, two sparrows, uh, aren't, aren't sparrows sold for two pennies, if you will? They're the, cheap, the cheapest of the birds, right? Yet God cares for every single sparrow. And he goes on to say, aren't you much more valuable than the sparrows? And then he mentions the swallows. 
And the swallows, a swallow is a bird that sits on the edge of a field and then it flies back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And in doing so, this swallow is trying to, to get its food, to eat bugs. <laughs> and, and, but the swallows are always busy. So you have sparrows that God cares for intimately and you have swallows that need a place to rest. And the swallows would find rest ultimately as they would build a nest there in the temple of God. So the psalmist is thinking, you know what? God cares for me like a sparrow. I need rest. Only God can give me the rest I need. And he says, that is near your altar. He says, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Well, then the third point here is that you need to draw near to God and you will find strength. The psalmist knew that strength came from God. And strength for the journey of life, strength for the Christian journey is found only as we draw near to God. Look at verse four, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion, right? So you see the, 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 the son of Korah, the Levite, was, he was picturing pilgrims traveling to the temple to be near to God. And as they traveled, they would go by this place in the Valley of Baca, which was normally dry, but God would provide water for them at the time when they would make the pilgrimage. And in two places there, he says that strength comes from God, right? He says there in verse five, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. And then in verse seven, they go from strength to strength, right? So, so nearness to God is important because it's where we find our strength for the journey of life. So we've seen so far that God is the source. Being near to God is the source of all blessing. Being near to God is important because he cares for you and he will give you rest. Thirdly, we've seen that we need to be near to God because that's where we find our strength, our spiritual strength for the journey of life. Well, fourthly, we're gonna see that we draw as we draw near to God, we gather with God's people and we're blessed by that. That actually when we come together as a body of Christ, as we're near God's people, in fact, we are near to God. Verse eight, hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wicked. So again, the psalmist understood that when he came to the temple and he served there in the temple, he would be surrounded by God's people. He would be close to God and he would be with the Lord's people who were and dwelled by God. And so the psalmist wanted that nearness to God. He wanted that nearness to God's people. And he says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. He wanted to be in the house of God. And lastly, we see as we draw near to God, we understand that he is the source of all that is good. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. So we should draw near to God because he is the source of all that is good. <laughs> and we need good, don't we? He says there in verse 11, no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless, right? So we want that good from God. Uh, we desire that good from God. And really, as we look at that passage there, uh, no good thing, uh, it really is kind of a parallel to Romans chapter eight, uh, where we read that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. The good is defined by God and the God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And so as we draw near to God, we understand that he is good and he only gives good gifts to his children. And at the beginning of verse 11 there, he says, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. And that concept of God being the sun is that he shines light on his children. He shows them the way, he gives them truth. And he is their ultimate source of protection, that he is our shield. He is the Lord Almighty. He is the Lord of hosts. And so certainly there's protection as we draw near to God. So, so five reasons there why we should draw near to God is the psalmist wanted to draw near to God. Now, it's important to understand in the Christian life that we can't draw near to God 
by our own works. And as we look at the biblical narrative, we see we see that throughout history, man has pushed God away. Man has walked away from God. Uh, Paul goes to great lengths in Romans chapter 3 to tell us that like sheep, we've all gone astray. We've walked away from God. And people are constantly trying to get back to God. Um, but the fact of the matter is that we cannot do that by our own works. We can only do that through Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews really, a large part is written to show us that that our works are not sufficient for us to draw near to God. Hebrews 7, 18 says this. He talks about the old covenant. He says, the old covenant, the former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless. The law made nothing perfect. The law couldn't draw us to God, but a better hope was introduced by which we draw near to God. And, and who is that better hope? That better hope is Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 3.18 says this, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, what? To bring you to God, to bring you near to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. This is so important because our sin separates us from God, right? Our sin causes us to be far off from God. But God wanted us to be near to him, so he sent his son Jesus Christ to take our sins away so that we could draw near God to God. Hebrews 10, 22 goes on to say, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to clean, cleanse us from guilty, a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful, right? Jesus Christ, the faithful one, uh, the one whose sins, who, whose death on the cross take our, takes our sins away, he alone can draw us near to God. And we need to have faith in that. So this morning, perhaps you are far away from God and you know that you're far away from God. I always tell our people, hey, you may be a thousand miles away from God spiritually, but you're only one step back. And that one step back is a step as you turn in repentance, trusting in the fact that Jesus Christ's blood takes your sins away so that you can draw near to God. Brother or sister in Christ, maybe um, you're struggling in your Christian walk and you know that you're far away from God. James chapter 4 says this. He says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And, and, and again, I want you to understand that it's not by works that you draw near to God. Um, you know, as believers, sometimes we fall prey to the idea that, you know, I need to do good things, and in doing those good things, you know, then I will you know, solidify my walk with God, and I will draw nearer to Him, okay? And, and yes, we need to do good works, but it's only the blood of Jesus that draws you near to Him. Uh, please understand that. So, a few takeaway uh, points, you know, as, as Christians on this journey of life, like the pilgrims going to be near to God in the temple, you know, how do we draw near to God? Well, first of all, it's through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's understanding that it's only through his blood that takes our sins away that we can draw near to him. Secondly, though, in the day-to-day -day pilgrimage that we uh, are a part of, we draw near to God in his word. God is present in his word. Every time we open up his word, it's a supernatural interaction through the power of the spirit that draws us near to God. So don't discount the word of God. If you're feeling far off, come back into the word. You'll draw near to God. And through prayer, right? Prayer is that is that conduit through which we communicate with God our needs through the power of the spirit. And God is always listening to his children, no matter how far off you feel, if you come with a repentant heart, God is listening to you and he is near to you. The third way is that we draw near to God as we gather with his people, right? Matthew chapter 18 really is a section on church discipline, but he says there that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is present there with us, right? And I don't want to take that verse too much out of context, but the, the principle there is that where God's people are gathered, God is present with him. And so when you gather with God's people on any given Lord's Day, understand this, each person there is, well, hopefully, if they're a part of the church, each person there is indwelled by the Spirit of God. So you have all these people indwelled by the Spirit of God coming together, right? And God promises his presence that he's going to be there in a special way. And so we are, in effect, drawing near to God as we come together on any given Lord's Day to worship God. So the nearness of God, it is the source of blessing uh, for all those who will step out in faith and draw near to him. And that's my prayer for myself, my prayer for you, Grace Baptist, this morning. 
as you set out today uh, to continue that pilgrimage uh, uh, of life uh, through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for um, the blood of Jesus that draws us near to you. Lord, help us always to rejoice in that and be thankful for that. Lord, I ask that uh, this morning uh, that you would help me and help those who may listen to this uh, to draw near to you through Jesus Christ and enjoy uh, the blessing that that brings. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Grace. Love you guys. Look forward to seeing you Sunday. Continue in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love does not envy. We'll talk about that on Sunday morning. Love you guys. Bye-bye.